Little Jasmine was playing football with her friends when they stopped because someone had to go pee. Yeah, I gotta go too. They all went to the woods, and Jasmine's jaw dropped upon seeing them. What in the world? Why are they all peeing standing up like that? Jasmine is the youngest child and only girl in an all-boy family. Her mother passed away when she was born, so she grew up with her father and three brothers. Her dad is a successful businessman who can ensure a happy life for his three sons, but struggles with Jasmine because he's only used to raising boys. Although he tried his best to raise a daughter, Jasmine became more like a fourth son. She has short hair, dresses like them, and plays her brother's games. She even tends to skip showers for days at a time. Her bedroom is messy and decorated with boy stuff. Her brothers even gave her a boy's name. One day while playing, her eldest brother Gary called over his younger siblings. Roll call! Like soldiers, the three younger siblings lined up from tallest to shortest, proclaiming their names loud and proud. Gary! Aaron! Nick! Jas- Jasmine? Her brothers looked at her, frowning disapprovingly. Then Gary had an idea. Nah, that doesn't sound right. How would you like a new name? A new name? Not a real new name. Just a nickname. Something cool we can call you. How about that? Uh, sure. How about we call her Gucci? Gucci? Like the luxury brand? Yeah, it sounds cool. So, how about that, Jasmine? You like Gucci? Jasmine nodded, and from that day forward, everyone called her Gucci. She learned to like it more than her real name, and as she grew up, she just assumed she was a boy. That is, until the incident happened today. Feeling absolutely bamboozled, Jasmine dashed home to tell her dad what she saw. Dad, am I a different type of boy? <laughs> no, you're a girl, Jasmine. A girl? Does it matter? Um, not really. Okay, cool. That's all I need to know. After that, Jasmine still dressed up and played boys' games, until a shocking event happened when she turned 12. One day at school, Jasmine suddenly felt very tired, and her stomach hurt. Can I use the restroom, please? Yes, is everything okay? Y yeah, I... But the moment she stood up, the boy sitting next to her started yelling to the rest of their classmates. Gucci, there's something on your pants! Jasmine looked down, and her face started burning bright red. She was frozen as laughter erupted from the rest of the classroom. Unable to take another second of it, she sprinted from the room and didn't look back. Despite her teacher shouting her name down the hall, Jasmine couldn't understand what was happening to her and frantically searched the school for her brothers. When she did find them, they were just as puzzled as she was. Trying to figure out what to do, they didn't realize they had ended up in front of the nurse's office. Once safe inside the office, Jasmine asked, Give it to me straight, ma'am. Am I dying? Um, no. Oh, my dog. I'm totally dying, aren't I? I got a big game coming up. I, I haven't even tried. You're not dying. It's called period, honey. Then how, how do I stop it from happening? You can't. It's gonna keep happening because you're becoming a woman. A woman? What the? But problems still follow Jasmine even after she entered high school. And one of those problems was Mean Girls. We all know you're gay, Gucci. Tell us who you have a crush on. Well, I've liked you for a long time, Tiffany. Want to go on a date? Ugh, in your dreams. Jasmine was pleased with herself as the group of girls stormed off. One day, Jasmine was walking down the stairs when she slipped, but someone caught her. She looked up at her savior to find Mike, the new student slash angel who just joined her high school. This was the first time Jasmine had felt her heart beat so fast. Not counting the time, she accidentally peed on her father's Persian rug when she was four years old. Hey, shut your front door! At that moment, Jaden quickly took the opportunity, pretended to fall on the two of them, and uttered a line that still makes him admire his own disguise skills to this day. Ouch! Ouch! My ankle! Who the fudge spilled water all over the stairs? Jasmine turned to look at the person who had just spoken. Then a hand reached out. You okay, bro? Jasmine blushed and looked up. She saw Mike offering her his hand and shyly reached for it. But suddenly, it hit her. He called me bro! From then on, Jasmine continuously ran into Mike in class, in the library, and found herself falling for him. But every time Jasmine greeted him, Hey! What's up, bro? But Jasmine didn't want him to be her bro. She wanted him to be her beau. She decided it was time to do something. Jasmine secretly put food and lollipops in Mike's locker and was caught by Tiffany. You know that's a boy's locker, don't you? Sorry if you're disappointed it's not yours. 
Why don't you just quit while you're ahead, Gucci? Mike is into real girls. I bet he doesn't even know you're supposed to be one. As Tiffany laughed, Jasmine turned bright red with anger. Storming away, she was determined to become the kind of girly girl Mike could fall for. Jasmine thought she would have to change from the inside out, so this would be her first destination. However, out of much embarrassment, she resorted to wearing a hoodie to fully cover herself. Jasmine suddenly noticed a saleswoman following her around the store. I'm gonna need security to get over here now. This dude is sus. No, 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 I'm just browsing. I'm trying to find a birthday gift for my uh, sister. Ah, right on. We have some lacy ones, bright colors like neon green and hot yellow that dogs, I mean, dudes really like. Jasmine felt dizzy. Just imagining wearing any of these made her feel embarrassed. Quickly, she thanked the saleswoman for her help and told her she'd come back, then hurried out of the store. How is being a girl so difficult? I wish I had some girlfriends to help with this. I have no clue what I'm doing. As soon as Jasmine got outside, she noticed Jaden checking himself out in front of a glass door. Excellent. My cover as Jaden is perfect. No one's gonna know who I really am. Jeez, this guy again. He seemed so self-obsessed. So much more girly than I could ever be. Jasmine then immediately came up with this brilliant idea, but Jaden had already left. The next day, Jasmine saw Jaden again, who was enthusiastically chatting with the gossip girls. Do these girls know how to get to the point? This gossip is exhausting. I just need them to say something relevant about Mike so I can get on with this investigation. When the mean girls left, Jasmine finally worked up the nerve to approach him with her proposition. Can you help me be more like those other girls? Like what? Chatty? More, uh, I don't know, feminine? Um, no thanks. Oh, come on. I know you have it inside. I don't have time for this nonsense. I have a job to do. Jaden started walking away, but Jasmine wasn't going to take no for an answer. Please, I want to get Mike to like me, and he only likes girly girls. Jaden realized this could be a good opportunity for him to get to Mike, instead of directly approaching him, which could easily raise suspicion. So he agreed. Together, Jaden and Jasmine found out that he seemed to be into designer stuff. He also adored Kendall Jenner very much. Looks like Mike has expensive tastes. Money's not a problem. Then she dragged Jaden to the mall. They bought all kinds of designer dresses, high heels, and bags, which made Jaden's jaw totally drop. Jeez, I didn't expect you to be rich, Rich. My dad is a collector of sorts. He likes antiques and things. You know, like those fancy old Persian carpets, original artwork, porcelain vases and things. He has a good job, so I guess he can afford such an expensive hobby. <laughs> then Jaden also taught Jasmine how to walk and behave like a girl. Jasmine struggled a lot. She was just so used to acting like a boy that acting like a girl was more foreign to her than her dad's Nordic glassware. How come you're better at being a girl than I am? Because I spent endless days and nights doing research on this character so I could easily master all this girly stuff. Oh, I guess it's all in my jeans. And that made Jasmine fall over laughing. The following day, Jasmine came to school with her brand new look and was immediately thrust into the spotlight. However, the only ones who didn't seem to notice were Mike and Tiffany. This plan seems like a bust. You can't lose the race before you've even reached the starting line. Huh, he seems to have even more faith in me than I have in myself. Gotta trust the process, I guess. And indeed, the following days, Jaden tried his best to help Jasmine approach Mike. At lunch, when Mike passed their table, Jaden designedly dropped Jasmine's apple, which he caught just before it hit the ground. Can I sit here? After a few days, Mike fell for it hook, line, and sinker. He tracked Jasmine down at the end of the day to ask her out. So, things didn't work out between you and Tiffany? Psh, no. I found out all her designer clothes were knockoffs. Can you believe that? I just hate liars, don't you? Uh, yeah, totally. Anyway, is that yes to a date? Absolutely. Who fell for it hook, line, and sinker then? Soon enough, Jasmine and Mike were officially dating, and Jaden didn't miss this chance to follow them 24-7. Jaden always seemed to appear out of nowhere to interrupt their conversations. So, tell us a little more about yourself, Mike. Where do you live? What does your dad do for work? Well, I lost my mom when I was too young to remember her, and I've basically lived with my nanny ever since. Dad comes around sometimes, but he spends a lot of time on business trips. That must be rough. I mean, I also lost... Huh, why so busy? What exactly does he do? Mike's face seemed darkened, and Jasmine couldn't help but be a bit annoyed with Jaden's constant presence. 
She wasn't sure who was dating Mike anymore, but there were benefits to having Jaden around all the time. He seemed to be Jasmine's savior when it came to ordering food, as Mike had a terrifyingly strict diet and skincare routine. Is there anything quality on this menu? I can't eat any of these greasy, fried, fatty foods. No soda either. Only smoothies or sugar-free milk. I also go to the gym four times a week and spend the rest at a spa. You should come with me sometime. Um, sure. That sounds cool. In order to keep her girly image, Jasmine tried to delicately take a few bites of the salad and ignored her grumbling stomach. Luckily, Mike had to leave early, so once he was out of sight, Jaden slid his full plate of food over to Jasmine. Here, you could act in your natural habitat now. Ugh, thank you so much. As Jasmine began eagerly scarfing down his food, Jaden reached for Mike's unfinished drink and took a sip. What the heck is this poison? I should have you know that was the only thing Mike found acceptable on the menu. A sugar-free kale smoothie. Ick. No wonder he couldn't even finish it. Then they had a great evening talking and dining on deliciously greasy, fried, fatty foods. As they were walking back home, Jasmine twisted her ankle, still not used to wearing high heels. Without thinking, Jaden quickly piggybacked Jasmine and continued walking. Comfortable quietness fell over them. Becoming self-conscious, Jasmine broke the silence. Am I, uh, too heavy for you? Actually, yeah, next time, cut down on the chicken before twisting an ankle. How dare you? I'm kidding, I'm kidding. You're fine. You're not heavy at all. I mean, maybe a little. <laughs> oh, shut up, you jerk. The two shared their cheerful laughter under the streetlights. Meanwhile, after seeing Jasmine and Mike together, Tiffany threw a tantrum and thought to herself she wouldn't let them off that easily. One day, when Jasmine and Mike were discussing where to go out next time, Jaden immediately seized the chance. Let's go to Mike's house. Come on. Alrighty then. My house it is. Let's go. When they arrived, Jaden couldn't stop admiring the house and looked everywhere. But only God knew he was just looking for clues. Staying fully in character, Jaden touched a little bit of everything, clinging on to Mike and gushing over everything. This house is beautiful and huge. It must be awesome living basically by yourself with all this. Is your dad around by any chance? We'd love to meet him. Meanwhile, Jasmine was becoming a little uncomfortable with how obsessed with Mike Jaden seemed to be. Is he gay? I mean, that's fine, but he could just say that. Later, when the two of them were alone, Jasmine figured it was time to confront Jaden. Hey, I was wondering, do you, like, have a crush on my boyfriend? Jaden was dumbfounded for a second, and before he could think more about it, he slyly smiled and pressed Jasmine against the wall. What makes you think so? I'm into girls. Jasmine couldn't think straight with Jaden's face so close to hers. Want me to prove it to you? Flustered, she hurriedly pulled away, heart fluttering, blushing profusely. I... I would like you to stop being a third wheel then. Thank you for helping me approach Mike and all. But now that we're dating, I would appreciate it if you could give us some space. Please. Jaden was taken aback for a second, then calmly said, You're right. Sorry. I'll back off. Being the third wheel all this time hasn't gotten me any info on Mike's dad anyway. He really was laying low. And maybe Mike didn't even know anything about what his father was doing. The FBI might need to find another way to approach this investigation. Little did Jaden know, Jasmine had become an unexpected factor in his investigation plan. Hi, that's me, Maxine, hiding behind some bushes and spying on a girl. Don't get me wrong, I don't have a crush on her, nor am I a total psychopath. I'm just doing a favor for my mate Damon. But if I'd known how crazy this was all going to get, I'd never have agreed to help him. It all started when Damon fell in love with this girl Sophie, she had this mysterious charm that made him want to talk to her right away. And he did. She didn't even glance at him. She just walked away. Ouch. I didn't like her one bit. She was so stuck up. But Damon didn't give up that easily. He tried all kinds of tricks to get her attention, even waiting for the bus with her, even though he had a car. Nothing worked, though, and this made him miserable. He begged for my help, but I said, No way! Then he said, Aw, oh, come on, Maxine, you're a girl, so just befriend her or something. Maybe you can find out what she likes, her fave foods, music, etc. Then I can try to impress her. Please, I'm begging you. I'll even lend you my Nintendo Switch for a month if you agree. You can't say no to that. He had me at that. I'd do anything to get a Nintendo Switch. Fine, it's a deal, but don't blame me if it doesn't work. So, after class that day, I searched for Sophie. 
She was at the bus stop, and I was about to approach her, when suddenly she walked away. I decided to follow her, and on the way, she stopped to help an old lady cross the road. Wow. I was surprised. For someone with such a cold face, she had a pretty warm heart. Hmm, maybe she wasn't so bad after all. After that, she started walking towards the park, and by then it was starting to get dark. What was she doing? She sat down on a bench in a creepy part of the park, almost like she was waiting for someone. I hid behind a bush so she wouldn't see me, but I was totally freaked out. Suddenly, two guys appeared and started talking to her, but they didn't seem like her acquaintances. Oh my gosh, she looked panicked. I had to help. I quickly shouted, Help! Officer! Please help! There are two guys bothering us! Obviously, there was no officer, but it worked. The two guys ran off, and I rushed over to make sure Sophie was okay. She was surprised to see me, but then she hugged me and thanked me for saving her. Her whole body was shaking. She must have been terrified. I walked with her back to our dorm, and she told me how she liked to come to the park at night because it was so peaceful. I told her it was clearly dangerous and that she probably shouldn't go alone anymore. Then we exchanged numbers, and after that we became quite close. Close enough. That was a few days later I told her Damon had a big crush on her, and asked if she'd maybe go on a date with him, but she just shook her head and said she wasn't ready. Her eyes looked sad, so I didn't push it any further, Maybe she'd just gone through a bad breakup? I didn't ask her again, but one night I was heading to her dorm for a movie night when I heard two people fighting. It was Sophie and some guy, and she was crying. It looked like the guy was about to hit her, so I ran over and said, Hey, what the heck do you think you're doing? Leave her alone or I'll call the cops. He just laughed at me and said to Sophie, We're not done yet. Then he stormed off. I asked Sophie if she was okay and who that guy was. Then she told me how he was her ex, and that he kept trying to get back together with her, but she wasn't interested. As she told me this, she started to cry and said, Because of him, I've become so scared and anxious. I'm even too scared to sleep at night. I felt so sorry for her, and told her I was here for her, and that she could call me any time. Well, Maybe I shouldn't have said that, because that's exactly what she started doing. Every night she'd call me, and we'd end up chatting until 3 a.m. I was so exhausted, but I wanted to help her. She seemed so anxious all the time. Damon knew we chatted a lot, but he'd stopped asking about Sophie. It seems he'd lost interest and was more worried about me looking like a zombie from The Walking Dead. You seriously need some sleep, Maxine. Leave Sophie be. She's clearly got issues. It's probably best to not get too involved. Easier said than done, though. But that night, I decided not to answer her call. I went to bed early, and when I woke up the next morning, I had about 20 missed calls and 50 texts from her. Oh my gosh! Some of them said she was so lonely and that I'd abandoned her. Then one said, if you don't pick up, then I will end it all. Okay, this was crazy. I immediately called her, but she wouldn't pick up. I rushed to her dorm, but nobody answered. I was panicking by then and bashing on the door, screaming, Sophie, open this darn door. But there was still no answer. I was terrified she'd done something bad. So I asked some students to help me bash down the door. And that's when she opened the door. I've never been so happy to see someone alive. I ran over to hug her, but she looked so annoyed. What are you doing here? You're making a scene, she said. What? I was so worried about you. You said you were going to... But she interrupted me and said, You need to get some sleep, Maxine. You seem insane. I couldn't believe it. After all those calls and texts, she was the insane one, not me. I didn't feel like yelling back, so I just left her. I needed some space. She tried to apologize to me over the next few days, but I didn't want to be around her. She even texted me saying if I wouldn't be her friend anymore, then life wasn't worth living. I was so tired of her threats, so I just ignored them. And then things got worse. A few days later, Damon and I were studying together when Sophie called me and said she was in the hospital. She told me that she had a brain tumor and they'd just done a biopsy to see if it was malignant or benign. I couldn't believe it. She asked me if I could pick her up and I said, of course, this was so scary. I told Damon and he just said, 
I think she's making it up, Maxine. How could she suddenly have a tumor? You guys just had a fight, and suddenly she's in the hospital? Come on, think about it. I was shocked. Damon, how could you? You're such a jerk. Then I ran off and arrived at the hospital to find Sophie sitting outside wearing a hospital cap. She said her hair had been shaved off for the biopsy, and I asked to see the scar, but she wouldn't show me. She said she'd get a headache if she took it off. I was just glad that she was okay and gave her a ride home. We made up, and I decided to look after her for the day. She seemed so weak, I couldn't bear to see her suffering. I called Damon to tell him that he owed me an apology and told him about Sophie. And he just said, Oh, wow, okay, sorry, hope she's okay then. But then a few days later, he called me and said, Listen, Maxine, Sophie's a liar. She didn't have a biopsy. I bumped into her earlier and her cap fell off, and she has a full head of hair under there. No way it would grow back that fast. Why would she lie to me? I didn't get it. I needed to know the truth, so after class, I went to her dorm. She opened the door right away, and sure enough, she had all her hair intact. She probably knew Damon had told me, and so hadn't even bothered to keep up the lie. This made me furious. Straight away, I started shouting at her. Honestly, Sophie, what is wrong with you? Why would you pretend to be sick like that? Friends don't do that. Sophie grabbed my hand and said, Maxine, I'm sorry. I was desperate. I only did it because I missed you and wanted you to care about me again. I took it too far, though. Please forgive me. Are you crazy? I screamed. I was worried sick about you. Are you sure there's not something wrong with you? Sophie started grinning in a weird way and said, The only thing wrong with me is that I'm in love with you, Maxine. She wouldn't let go of my hand, and I just stared in shock. Wh what, what did you say? You heard me. I love you. Then she started to manically laugh and said, I've loved you since the day we first met. I knew you were following me, so I pretended to be in danger so you'd come rescue me. Even my ex-boyfriend was fake. He was just one of my friends pretending. Can't you see? I'm willing to do just about anything to get your attention. If that's not love, then what is? This couldn't be happening. I tried to stay as calm as possible and said, Listen, Sophie, I'm flattered. Really, I am. But I'm straight. I see you as just a friend, okay? But Sophie wouldn't give up. She grabbed my hands again and said, How do you know that? You didn't even try to love me yet. Just give me a chance and I'll show you what true love looks like. I tried to let go of her hands, but it was impossible. Sophie grabbed my hands tighter and tighter that it even began to hurt. She looked me in the eyes and, oh my god, it's like I couldn't recognize her anymore. She looked like a crazy person, like a psychopath. Then she began to speak in a really creepy tone. You can't get away from me. You're mine now. I was so scared. I needed to get out of here. So I pushed her really hard that she fell on the ground and I ran like a mad woman out of there until I was back in my dorm. Then I called the police, but by the time they reached her dorm, she was gone. I told them what happened and showed them a photo of her. And you won't believe it. Apparently, I wasn't the only girl Sophie had attacked. There were other girls too. After that night, I was terrified. Everywhere I went, it felt like someone was watching me. Then one evening, after my shift at work, I was walking through the park back to my dorm when I heard someone up ahead. I knew right away it was Sophie, but she wasn't alone. She was with some guys. They spotted me and started heading towards me, but I ran as fast as I could, and luckily the police were just outside the park and went in and arrested them. Sounds like a coincidence, right? Well, it wasn't. Sophie's not the only one who can fool people. I knew Sophie was stalking me, so I told the police, and together we created this plan to catch her, and voila, it worked. Sophie, if you're watching this, I wish you all the best, but let's not meet ever again. That's enough stalking for one lifetime. Hi, I'm Kate, and I'm doing something totally thrilling. I'm running away! Just picturing my parents' worried faces makes me smile. Why, you ask? They deserve it for trying to send me, their beloved only daughter, to some disgusting girls' boarding school. 
Yuck! No parties, the grossest uniform, bossy supervisors, and no hot-muscled guys! Ugh! That place is for nerds, not me! An it girl and the founder of Clique Chic, our school's exclusive group for the hottest, most sought-after girls. To be a part of the club, you must be really fashionable, you know? I'm talking about a wardrobe full of the latest designer must-haves, manicured nails, and the glossiest hair. Only girls as dazzling as us can make the school hallway our catwalk stage. As one of us, your life will be filled with endless parties and super cute jocks fighting for your attention. Studying and homework? <laughs> That's not our thing. Those loser nerds who are chasing after us will take care of it. Hey, do you know those people? I looked outside and saw a group of bodyguards who were yelling and trying to force my cab to stop. Ugh, this was so uncalled for. 500 bucks if you can get rid of them. The driver immediately sped up. <laughs> Ordinary people will do anything for a little bit of money. He dropped me off at a service station and I quickly snuck inside and hid in the restrooms. Ew, this place was gross. Gosh. Those bodyguards were loitering about outside so no one could leave or enter without them seeing. How tragic. This was so stupid. All my parents needed to do was let me stay at home for the summer. But no, they sent those bodyguards after me to ruin my life. Suddenly a cubicle door flung open and knocked into me. Ouch! Are you blind? What are those glasses even for? I... I'm sorry. The girl quickly apologized, then she bent down to pick her fallen stuff up. But when she looked up, I gasped in shock. Holy guacamole! What in the world? She looked exactly like me. I mean, at least her face did. Her style was disgusting and old-fashioned. Ew. But given my dire situation, I came up with an amazing idea. Okay, so this is weird. Do you want to make some money? And I mean a lot of money? She gave me this dumbfounded look. Ew, I hope I didn't get frown lines like she did when I screwed up my face. They were ghastly. I have a really lucrative job for you. As you can see, we have similar faces. Freaky, but fortunate. So I need you to pretend to be me and live my rich life for a month or two. Here's my Twitter account. Just skim through it. You can learn everything about me there. It should be enough for you to play the part and avoid my family's suspicion. And here's your payment. I rifled through my bag and handed her the rest of the cash. Jeez, this must be a huge amount for her, as her eyes lit up like she was seeing money for the first time. And she immediately took it. We quickly exchanged clothes, and as instructed, she went outside to hand herself over to the bodyguards. Ugh. Freedom! Now bring on one long, hot summer of fun. But first, I have to go shopping. Wearing these old-fashioned, disgusting clothes made me want to puke. Oh no! My parents have locked all of my credit cards! I can't even buy a soya milk ice latte now! Oof! How could my parents be so cruel? The worst part is... I had stupidly given all my cash and my phone to that girl. With no other options left, I reluctantly searched the girl's bag. A few old-fashioned clothes, some stupid books, and an unbranded lipstick? Huh? Was that all? How can people live like this? But, hmm, what's this? In her small notebook was a train ticket and an offer letter to work at Homestay Allen. So... Looks like she's going there for a summer job. Hopefully that homestay has a bath with scented candles and a pool for me to sunbathe by. I need to work on my tan. I was glad to get off that flea-ridden thing and breathe in some fresh air. Hmm, now where was my ride? There was a short, chubby old man holding a board with the name Clara on it. Ah, the name on the train ticket was Clara. So this meant he was here for me? Ugh. He didn't even have flowers with him, and he could have at least combed his hair. So, turns out, that's Danny, the manager and owner of the homestay. Honestly, 
If it wasn't for the circumstances, I would never have set foot in this stupid place. Oh, how the day got worse. Without even being allowed to rest my weary feet, Danny gave me work. Housekeeping. It was a joke, wasn't it? My nails were not made for menial jobs. Life here was horrible. I had to get up so stupidly early that it was still dark out, then clean a dozen dusty old bedrooms. After that, I would do the laundry, dry the towels and bedding, fold them, and arrange them neatly into each room. At noon, I also had to help the chef here, Anna, prepare lunch, and I was also forced to wash a mountain of gross dishes. I had never done such silly chores like this at home. Instead, they were always done for me. Didn't expect them to be this exhausting. <laughs> you should put them in order, so they won't break. Ugh, where did this nosy guy come from? Are you lecturing me? I replied crankily and walked away. Suddenly... Oh no! This was the ninth time I'd broken stuff since I'd arrived here! And that wasn't counting my poor broken nails! I quickly bent down to clean up, but... Ouch! I cut my finger on one of the pieces. The guy quickly ran over and bandaged my wound. Bond, that's my name. Huh? What's this? Did he just wink at me? My heart was pounding. Um, I mean, he was cute. Yeah, he was really cute. Um, I'm K- Clara. Go do something else. Leave this to me. Realizing that I'd been staring at Bond for a while, I hurriedly got up and rushed to the kitchen. Nice to meet you, Clara. I'm your new colleague. Well, that's not so bad. At least I have someone to share my workload with and to chat. The next morning, I was cleaning the floor, half asleep, when Bond came over, put an AirPod in my ear, and winked at me. Imagine you're dancing. Then you won't feel so tired anymore. Okay, this sounded kinda lame, but at least no one else was around to see me, so I decided to just go with it. So I gave it a try, with Bond, <laughs> and I relaxed a little. Well, I didn't expect it to be so much fun. That night, as I was about to turn off the light, I heard a knock at the door. It was Bond. He wanted to show me a secret, so he took my hand and led me to the beach. Yes, we were holding hands, and his hand was really warm. He took me to a sandy beach and shone his flashlight at his feet. Something was moving under the fine white sand. Ew! What was that? I clung to his arm in fear. Aww, little turtles! I exclaimed as they slowly emerged from under the sand. Yes, they're cute, aren't they? Let's give them a hand. They have to get to the sea before dawn. I hesitated because I thought this was so stupid. When the sun rises, they'll be easily spotted and eaten by predators. Fine. Since Bond pleaded, I had no choice but to sacrifice my sleep to escort the baby turtles to the sea. Why would their mom just abandon her babies like that? Their mom protected them when they were eggs and now it's time for them to start fending for themselves. I bet they don't mind. You see, they're all trying their best to crawl towards the sea. But it was us who helped them. Then they'll be very grateful to you. And so am I. Whoa, I never felt like this before. It felt like my heart was aching, but in a good way? Thinking about it, I suppose this was the first time I'd ever helped anyone before. Now I kind of understood why my parents did what they did. They just wanted me to be more independent and stop hanging around with those vain, show-off girls. They sure would be pleased if they could see me now, with this sweet and gentle guy. He was the total opposite of the rich boys back home. When I was hurt, he made sure I was okay. He opened my eyes to new experiences, and he didn't try to impress me with dumb flowers and expensive gifts. I've been thinking about Bond all day, and this is the 1,001st time I've peeked at him. I think I'll have to confess my feelings before I go crazy. So that evening, after finishing all my work, 
I knocked on Bond's door. Huh? Why was a teary-eyed Miss Anna standing there? Then she told me the shocking truth. Bond had left without saying goodbye. Panicked, I walked into the room, but there was nothing left of his. Nothing! No! This couldn't be happening! I hadn't even had a chance to confess yet! The next day, I felt so down. It sucked not having Bond here. But then in my zombie state, I accidentally picked up the newspaper at the front desk. O-M-G. On the front page was a picture of... Bond! God, I couldn't believe it. He was the son of a famous billionaire and they were looking for him. Turns out, I wasn't the only one who'd run away from home. But why did he leave so suddenly? He could have told me the truth. He could have said bye. Ugh! My untold feelings for him felt like an unreachable splinter in my side. I couldn't carry on like this. I needed to find Bond. With my meager salary, I got on the train back to the city, imagining seeing Bond again. This is without a doubt the most nervous I'd ever been in my entire life. It didn't matter how much I pleaded my case and explained that I was Bond's friend. The security guards refused to let me in. I was about to leave when suddenly I saw Bond from afar. He was with a girl. What in the world is this? I tried to strain my eyes to see. My god, isn't that me? No, it's the girl I hired to pretend to be me. What was she doing with Bond? And why did they look so close? Could it be? Hi, I'm Sarah, and I'm here to tell you how my not-so-small problem changed the course of my life. When it comes to butts, well, there are lots of names for them, such as tush, behind, backside, bottom, and so on. Trust me, I've heard them all, countless times. You see, I have a big butt. In proportion to the rest of me then, well, it's undeniably massive. My mom and dad both have pretty big butts, so combine both of their genes together and you end up with me. Ever since I was a little kid, strangers passed comments on the size of my butt. I remember being in a grocery store once, innocently looking in the candy aisle, when a woman came up to my mom and said, Your baby, is she alright? Because her backside seems to be very big. Yeah, seriously, some people were that rude. And the older I got, and the bigger my butt grew, then the worse their comments became. Teenage me? Well, I had a hard time. At the time when I hit puberty, my butt became even more enormous than boys didn't look at my face anymore. Instead, they only seemed to notice my butt. One boy was staring at it so hard that he walked straight into his locker and gave himself a concussion. Then there were the seats at school. I mean, why did they have to be so tiny? I'd rather stand up than try to fit in them. But no choice for me, I had to literally squeeze myself onto it, then do a wiggle routine to get out of it, and in fact, whenever I tried to sit down, someone always pointed and laughed at me. Talk about awkward. This popular girl called Mary always went out of her way to tease me. One day, I was wandering down the hallways when Mary stuck her foot out and tripped me over, and then said, No one likes you, tushy face. I looked up at her, and that's when I realized I'd had enough. I must do something to stop this. As she triumphantly walked past me, my anger flared up, and for a moment, I lost control. I rushed in and pushed her. The next moment, she fell down the stairs and lay there unconscious. I stood stunned watching her. I hadn't noticed that we were standing near the stairs. Seeing that, her group of mean girls rushed in and started to hit me. I just couldn't do anything but lay on the ground and keep my head. Then, a voice piped up at the back of the crowd. Leave her alone. It isn't her fault that she has a big bum. It was this girl called Anita. After that, we started hanging out more, both in school and out of it. Having Anita by my side made me feel stronger, and the mean comments about my butt size didn't bother me so much anymore. My life at school got a bit better. Then one day, this rich kid at school was holding a huge senior party at his family mansion. For the first time in a long time, I felt confident enough to go. 
I arrived at the party wearing my cutest dress. I saw Mary with her large gang of wannabes, but I knew there'd be lots of trouble if she saw me, so I chose to avoid her. Then I spotted Thomas, the most handsome, sweetest guy I knew. I'd pretty much had a crush on him since preschool, but I'd always been too self-conscious to tell him about it. Go and talk to him. Anita gave me a gentle nudge forward. Go on, before Mary gets to him first. My nerves took over, so I said to her, but what if he isn't interested? She rolled her eyes at me. Not gonna happen. Now go. He seemed happy to see me, and we both hung out and drank a lot. Then we snuck off upstairs to the master room. We sat on the bed, and he looked at me, like, really looked at me, then said, I really like you, Sarah, and I think you're the most beautiful girl in school. I blushed. This was the sweetest thing a boy had ever said to me. Then he leaned in and kissed me. OMG, talk about amazing. We were passionately kissing when the door burst open and someone shouted, Why are you with her? It was a furious looking Mary. She continued yelling at us both and even tried to hit me. But Thomas protected me. Then he took my hand and led me out of the room. Mary continued to shout mean comments at me, but I didn't care. Thomas liked me, and she just needed to deal with it. A week later, Thomas asked me out, and I said yes. Being his girlfriend was the best thing ever, as he made me feel so special. Suddenly, having a big butt didn't seem to matter. In fact, Thomas said it only added to my beauty. Then one day at school, I was sitting in class when an announcement came over the speaker. Sarah Montgomery, please report to the principal's office right away. The principal said that Mary's parents had reported the fight between me and Mary, and I was the one who started it first. So I was expelled. I was so mad that I didn't even bother clearing up my locker. Instead, I just stormed out of there. I ended up at a different school, and I tried my best to focus on my studies. I wanted to go to college and study drama, as I loved acting, and believed my unique body shape would be a big selling point in the industry. Thomas and I continued to date. He always supported me and made me feel like I was capable of doing anything. I didn't see much of Anita anymore, but we kept in touch. One day, I was studying in a cafe when a man came over to me, passed me his business card, and told me that with a butt like mine, I could make serious money modeling. So that's how I became a photo model. Turns out the man hadn't been lying about the money. Okay, so I wasn't an actress yet, but I earned loads. Finally, the part of my body I was so ashamed of made me super successful. I paid off all my college fees and gave my parents back all the money I'd loaned off them. A few months later, I was on a date with Thomas, and in the middle of dinner, he bent on one knee and pulled out a ring and said, Sarah, will you marry me and make me the happiest man alive? Overcome with joy, I shouted out, Yes, 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 I will marry you! Finally, the day of our wedding arrived, and I was so excited. After everything I'd been through, I was finally going to marry my charming prince. I had the most amazing fairy tale dress and the perfect castle venue. Better still, Anita was there as my maid of honor. As I was dancing, I saw Jack, who was my drop dead gorgeous cousin, and he just came to join my wedding party. Anita had always been looking to meet him. I was so excited and decided that tonight was the perfect time for Anita to get access to him. I went looking for her, but she wasn't on the dance floor or by the bar. So I searched upstairs. I was about to open one of the doors when I heard a male voice coming from within. I'll try and get some money off her. Just give me a few weeks, okay? Then I heard a girl's voice say, But honey, we need the money now, and I don't like Sarah. She's more butt than person. Then the guy said, You know I don't love her. I only love you. I looked through the crack in the door and saw the two of them kissing. Then I registered who they both were. It was Thomas and Anita. My new husband was kissing my best friend on our wedding day. Angrily, I ran into the room and threw my shoe at Thomas's head. Unfortunately, he ducked in time. Seeing me, Anita was extremely terrified and immediately ran out of the room, leaving just me and Thomas there. I shouted at him. You're a jerk! Anything to say, huh? Thomas looked at me in panic. 
and confess to me all. So Thomas told me how he'd liked me back in school, but over time, his feelings for me changed, and he found himself falling for Anita. He was going to break up with me, but then I ended up being successful. Seeing as he'd been the one supporting me, he thought it was only fair that he got a share of my money. So him and Anita constructed this whole wedding plan to take half of my money. I was so shocked. I had to sit on the ground. My heart felt like it was shattering in my chest. Then I opened my mouth and screamed at the top of my voice. I ran out of that place crying and the wedding was cancelled. I'm not gonna lie, it's been hard. Being betrayed by the man I loved and my best friend was painful. I shed a lot of tears over them, but I refused to shed any more. Turns out, Thomas wasn't the man for me, but I believe that my perfect man is out there somewhere. My backside may be exceptionally large, but I'm still a real person with real feelings. I only wish the world was more understanding, but for now, I'm using my butt to progress in my career, and I have a feeling I'm gonna be just fine. Always be you, and never let anyone take away your shine. If you try so hard to fit in and be normal, then you'll never find out how truly amazing you are and how you were born to stand out. I blinked open my eyes. Whoa, my head felt dizzy. And, er, why was I covered in scratches? My mind was totally blank. I couldn't remember what happened. The last picture flashing through my mind was a heated argument between me and some guy. Then I stormed off and, and now here I am in this gloomy place. I think it's a basement or something. It's cold, and it stinks of damp. Dang it! I cannot remember his face! I knew I needed to get out of here, and fast! I ran to the door and tried opening it, but to no avail. It's locked! I slammed my hands against the door and shouted, Anyone? Help! I could hear footsteps approaching, so ignoring my throbbing palms and burning throat, I banged on the door and screamed out, Open the door! Oh. My. God. It's him! The guy I'd been arguing with before! He was holding a sandwich and smiling gently at me. Oh, Alice, my puppy. Are you awake? I thought you might be hungry. Who are you? You brought me here, didn't you? What do you want? He looked confused, then sadly blurted out, Oh no, honey, you must have memory loss from the accident. It's your Josh here. I'm your boyfriend. I squinted at him. He did look familiar, but what boyfriend? What accident? He showed me the photos on his phone. O-M-G. That was me with him, and we looked so happy together. But why can't I remember anything? I hit my head with my hands in frustration, while Josh just stood there against the wall staring at me and giggling. So maybe this Josh guy was my boyfriend, but that didn't explain why he'd locked me up in this dungeon. This wasn't a normal boyfriend thing to do. I rushed to the door, but he grabbed me in his arms. Let me out! You definitely have some wicked intention going on bringing me here! I scowled. Oh my gosh, Alice, you've been watching too many movies. Do you really not remember anything? I gave him a clearly not look, then folded my arms. I guess the accident was pretty intense. We argued, then you insisted on driving while you were drunk, and then caused a fatal accident. Never mind. I think we shouldn't go in too deep about that right now. It must be traumatizing for you. But that's why I decided to bring you here. So the cops wouldn't arrest you. Wh wh what? Why couldn't I remember such a horrible thing? But looking at all the wounds on my face and body, maybe everything was exactly like what Josh said. No, no! I... I... 
have to c confess. I stuttered in tears. Are you crazy? Do you want to go to jail? But, but... Alice, no buts. I'm going to protect you and keep you safe. This was a lot to process, so in a moment of panic, I found myself agreeing to his crazy plan. Josh said this was an emergency bunker back from his grandfather's time. Sure thing. I mean, it sure smelled musty. There's not even a window, just a flickering wall light. It felt like I was in a horror movie. Josh also told me that he'd taken my phone off me so the cops wouldn't be able to trace it and arrest us both. And that's it. Every morning, noon, and night, Josh would bring me food and talk to me about his day. Puppy, I'm home. Puppy? Oh, it sounded cute at first, but I soon became allergic to that word. Hey, puppy, eat this. Puppy this, puppy that. Puppy, puppy, puppy. I was so fed up with the word puppy that at times I actually thought I was nothing more than a pet to him. Then each night, he insisted on rubbing my back so I'd fall asleep more easily. Sounds nice, right? But no, it wasn't. He rubbed it really hard, and when I asked him to stop, he just laughed. Obviously, he wasn't doing it to make me feel better, but regarded it as a pastime. Ugh! And that's not all. A few times, I'd wake up to see him sitting there, staring at me with this gummy grin on his face. Then, when I checked my hair, I saw that he'd tied loads of these dumb little bows in it. Are you crazy? I'm not a kid! I grumbled while pulling and throwing all those dumb things out of my head. But puppy, they look so cute. Tom always liked them. I glared at him. Didn't bother saying anything anymore. Oh, and FYI, yes, Tom's his old dog's name. Okay, so I didn't need a genius to figure out that something was seriously up with this guy's head. But then, things got weirder. One time, he brought down food for us to eat together. It was fried chicken, and as soon as I smelt it, my eyes sparkled. I was about to take a piece when suddenly he pulled the plate away and took a big bite. I didn't even have time to react. Then he handed me the chicken thigh bone he hadn't finished yet. Help me with the rest, puppy. This part is too hard to gnaw. I rolled my eyes at him and flushed up with anger. Seeing my reaction, he said, What's wrong, puppy? Tom always loved the leftovers. Are you crazy? I screamed. Yo, I'm kidding. Don't you know how to take a joke? He grinned. Kidding? What kind of kidding is that? I've had enough of this. This place was driving me insane. I could hardly sleep at all because I couldn't even distinguish between day and night. Then, when I did close my eyes, I found myself tormented by the serious crime I'd committed. Josh was trying to save me. Yes, but I didn't ask him to do that. I couldn't live like this. I needed to face the truth. I had to turn myself in. The next morning, when Josh brought me breakfast, I told him what I wanted to do. Expectedly, he got mad and glared at me. Alice, why do you want to go to jail so badly? I can't stay here forever. I have to face up to what I've done. But it's so peaceful here with me. Peaceful? Was he being serious? It sure didn't feel peaceful. Instead, I felt like I was playing the role of his pet. I lurched forward, but Josh immediately grabbed me so I couldn't move. I tried squirming my way free, but he was a strong guy. Suddenly, he covered my nose with a handkerchief and my eyes closed. Then everything turned black. I slowly opened my eyes. I was in the same familiar room, but... Bars. I saw bars. Ugh. I was in a cage. Then I kicked something. It was a water bowl. Puppy, you're so naughty. I can't lose you, so I've put you in here. He grinned at me as he handed me a sandwich. I chucked it away, then screamed at him to let me out. Seeing this, he immediately left and returned with a bunch of plush toys 
and dropped them in the cage. Hope they'll make you happier. Then he tried to stuff the sandwich into my mouth. Furiously, I took a bite and spat it in his face, then sneered while throwing the toys at him. Jeez, some of them even squeaked. Wow. Okay. His demeanor changed, and his eyes turned scary. If that's what you want, don't blame me later. Things were different after that. Each day, he only gave me a bowl of those gross-smelling biscuits, then he'd just sit there gawping at me. At first, I refused to eat them. But in the end, I was so exhausted that I gave in, even though I'm pretty sure they were dog biscuits. Ugh. I realized that resisting him wasn't benefiting me at all. It was only making him act more horrible. That's when a genius plan popped into my head. So the next time when Josh appeared with the biscuits, I smiled sweetly at him and said, Josh, baby, it's been so long since we've been on a date. How about you go and get us a bottle of wine and we can spend some quality time together? His eyes lit up. And of course, he agreed without hesitation. He hurried off to get the wine. Cheers to us! Josh, you're the love of my life, and I'm so grateful to God for bringing you into my life. Please stay with me forever. I flashed a sweet smile and whispered in his ear. Every time he took a sip of wine, I fluttered my eyelashes at him as I refilled his glass. To say I'm a Hollywood actress with an Oscar-worthy performance would be an understatement. Soon, Josh was so drunk he went cross-eyed. He fell to the ground before I even finished pouring him the last glass of wine. Seizing the opportunity, I stepped over him to get out, when suddenly, a hand grabbed my ankle. Oh no, I'm screwed! My heart felt like it was about to jump out of my chest. I immediately turned around, ready to fight him when, well, it turned out he was just dreaming. Phew. Thank God. I gently pulled my foot free and immediately dashed out of there. I climbed up the stairs to a living room where I found my phone left on the table. I quickly grabbed it and ran out of that horrible house. My legs trembled and I felt like they might give away beneath me at any second. But somehow... I managed to find the inner strength to keep on running. I couldn't use my phone as it was out of battery, and I was too disoriented to figure out where my home was. So, when I stumbled upon a police station, I walked toward it. I took a deep breath. This was a tough decision. I knew I was going to jail, but I couldn't live in creepy Josh's basement forever and be his substitute pet. No thanks. I had to face up to what I'd done. Sir, I'm here to confess. The cop looked confused and told me there hadn't been a fatal accident recently. But then he said I looked familiar. So he looked up my name and turns out my family had reported me missing. That liar Josh had tricked me. It was all a ruse so he could imprison me. How vile! I charged my phone, and up popped hundreds of messages and voicemails from my worried friends and relatives. This was all so overwhelming. I put my head down for a moment, then all the memories gradually surfaced. I'd been in the mall parking lot, and I felt like someone was following me. So I hid in the corner, and that's when Josh appeared. So I asked him, why are you following me? Alice, I love you. Please come back to me. I rolled my eyes and started walking away from him. Go away, weirdo. We're done. Then he grabbed my shoulder. I shook myself free and ran away. When a car came out of nowhere and... Ugh! Yes, of course. Josh was my crazy, controlling stalker ex. So he must have taken advantage of my unconsciousness to take me back to his basement and come up with his bonkers plan. Then to make things even easier for him, I ended up with memory loss. Typical. <sighs> it was a nightmare. But thankfully, it's over now. The cops took my statement, and soon after that, my family came to pick me up. They all burst out crying, and we hugged each other tightly. 
It's taking a while to get back to normal life after all the trauma, but I'm getting there. I do want to vomit whenever I hear anyone say the word puppy. Ooh. However, this didn't stop me from getting my own rescue dog, Lily the Corgi, and I never put bows in her fur. As for Josh, well, he was convicted for false imprisonment and has to stay in jail for four years. Who's in the cage now? Hmm. Serves you right. Sarah, it's about time you got married. What are you talking about? Get married? Not a chance. I'm still in school. Oh, give me a break. Marrying a rich guy will bring you more money than school ever will. Mom, I'm not like you. I actually like school. Now leave me alone. That was the conversation between my mom and I about two months ago. Well, look at me now. Here I am staying in one of the most luxurious villas in Boston. My name's Sarah, by the way, and I'm 16 and in high school. My life hasn't ever been normal. For starters, I don't have a dad, and my mom is totally irresponsible, choosing to spend any money we have on partying and men. Of course, she doesn't even have a job, so we rely on her latest fling to help support us. <sighs> my mom has never really cared about me, so I just stay out of her life as well. She can do what she wants as long as I can do what I want. And what I want is to study really hard so that I can have a better life than hers. But as usual, she intervened in that plan, and two months ago she forced me to quit high school and get married. Obviously, I refused, and I even went on a hunger strike for a few days. But then one day she said, Tomorrow, our two families will meet. If you don't rock up, I'll go to your school and tell them you're not coming back. But if you come, you can still go to school. At least until the wedding. Ugh. School. She's using what I love most against me, again, to force me to follow all of her ridiculous plans. Fine. I agreed. I mean, it was just a meetup. It's not like they could pressure me to get married right away, right? So the next day, I followed my mom to go meet Adam's family. I was shocked when I saw him. He was wearing a mask that covered half of his face, and he just sat there, not uttering a word, just staring at me without even blinking. Honestly, it was so creepy. His parents seemed nice, though, and they explained that he'd been in an accident when he was a kid, which had left him with a severe burn scar on his face. So he wore the mask to avoid scaring people off. I could see him watching me, waiting for my reaction. So I tried to smile back. I felt so bad for him. But at the same time, there was no way I wanted to spend my life with this guy. So I decided to put my plan into action. All I had to do was get his parents to disagree with the arrangement so I acted as clumsy as possible. I wanted to give the worst first impression ever. As soon as the wine was poured, I leaned over and knocked his mom's glass all over her white dress. My mom looked mortified, but I didn't stop there. I ate with my hands and dropped food all over the table and kept chewing with my mouth wide open. But no matter how hard I tried, Adam's parents still seemed to like me, and I could see him slightly smirking at me. What did a girl have to do to put this family off? Clearly, they were desperate. Near the end of the meal, they started discussing the engagement. Apparently, I'd move into Adam's family house so we could get to know each other. Then, if I could help Adam to feel less insecure, they'd let me finish high school before we had to get married. Um, so didn't that mean they just wanted a friend for Adam? Someone to keep him company? Hmm, it's not that bad. I guess I can do that then. So after the engagement, I moved into Adam's mansion. After school every day, I'd hang out with him and try to cheer him up. I'd play him my fave music, show him some epic movies, even try telling him jokes. But still, he barely smiled. He wasn't interested in anything I liked. Then one day, I was struggling with my science homework when he passed by and decided to check out what I was doing. Suddenly, he started chatting away, and I realized how much he loved chemistry and physics. He even offered to help me with my assignments. He was so passionate about those subjects, and this was a win-win, because I'd finally found something we could discuss. He even started opening up to me. It was a start. I began to feel more comfortable around him. On one sunny day, I even asked Adam if he wanted to play a game of badminton. At first, he refused, as he didn't like being outside, but I wouldn't stop begging until he said, Fine. Have you played this game before? No. Okay, then let me show you. I was so excited to teach Adam. 
Although I'm not great at hand-eye coordination, I'd been playing badminton a lot at school, so I felt pretty confident. Finally, I'd found something I was better at than him. Ha! Huh. Okay, so I spoke too soon. After a few missed serves, he somehow mastered the shuttlecock and kicked my ass. <sighs> Why did you say you've never played this before? Because it's the truth. I, I don't believe you. Adam just shrugged and then left me lying on the ground. He had to be bluffing. It's impossible for anyone to be that good the first time they do something. Ugh. But it was fun, I guess. Adam was growing on me, but I couldn't be around him 24-7 as I had classes to attend. And no cap, I was extremely happy that I still got to go to school. Plus, at school something incredible happened. One day I was walking through the schoolyard when I tripped over a can. Just as I was about to faceplant on the ground, a hand appeared and pulled me back up. We made eye contact, and I swear it was love at first sight. His name was Brian, and he's super handsome. From that moment on, we texted nonstop every day, and it wasn't long before he asked me to be his girlfriend, and of course I said yes. I was smitten, but I obviously had to hide it from Adam and his parents. One night, I was on the phone with Brian when suddenly a text from my mom arrived. In fact, ever since the engagement, she hadn't even been in touch. Maybe she was too busy spending the huge amount of money that Adam's parents had given her. Sarah, I really need some cash. Just around $500. Can you please ask Adam if he can lend me it? What? How have you already spent the money his parents gave you? Stop asking questions. Just get me that money, okay? Ugh, money, money, money. All she cared about was money. She didn't even ask if I was okay. Um, um, I, I want to ask. Can, can you... Get me some money. Money? For what? Um, I, I, I need to pay for my tutoring class. I haven't had money to pay for the past few months. Mm, how much do you need? Um, about $500. Okay, I'll tell the butler he'll give it to you later. Phew, that was easier than I thought. Uh, but Adam didn't ask twice about it. Was it because that amounts just nothing to a rich guy like him? Anyway, at least he'd said yes. That would shut my mom up for a bit. If only. A few days later, she texted me again. This time she wanted $3,000. Was she kidding me? Uh, I just ignored her. But she kept bombarding me with texts and calls. It went on for days. She wouldn't leave me alone. I didn't give in, though. Until this photo was sent to my phone. It was of me and Brian holding hands and clearly in love. Turns out my mom had been so desperate for the money, she'd turned up at my school one day to talk face to face, and that's when she saw us together. She then threatened me and said that if I didn't get her the money, she'd tell Adam's family what I was up to. This terrified me, because then I'd have nowhere to go, and I wouldn't be able to go to school anymore. I couldn't let that happen. I had no other choice but to keep asking Adam for the money with my lame excuses. From buying books, to a relative who was ill and needed treatment, you name it, I'd use it. Every time I asked Adam, he looked at me like he was worried about me and asked if I was okay. This made me feel even more guilty, because it seemed like he genuinely cared about me. To make up for it, I'd bake him cookies, and even knit a cute sweater for him as a birthday gift. But then, a few weeks later, he asked if we could talk. As soon as I walked into his room, he threw a bunch of photos at me. They were all of me and Brian. I couldn't believe it. Did my mother betray me? But that's not the case. He told me how he'd had someone follow me because he felt I'd been acting weird. Not only had he discovered I was dating someone, he'd also found out that I'd been lying about the money and giving it to my mom. He was so disappointed in me. Please leave me alone. I don't want to see you anymore. I was so worried I'd be kicked out of their house, but no one mentioned anything. His parents still chatted to me at dinner, and they seemed happy enough. Only Adam avoided me, which of course made me feel terrible. The only one I had to lean on right now was my sweet Brian. So after dinner one night, I decided to go over to his place. I really needed some comfort right now. But when I arrived outside, through the window, I saw another girl in his room. They started kissing, and I thought I was going to be sick. In a panic, I quickly crawled over and hid below his window to listen in. But 
Aren't you a bit too close with that Saragal lately? Don't you dare. Don't worry, Pumpkin. It was all just for you. I noticed that she lives in a big mansion, with personal drivers and all. Her family must be filthy rich. So I just wanted to be a good friend and help them spend those money. You know, and maybe that way I could get you the new Chanel handbag that you always want. Oh, really, honey? So, how's it going? Well, a dud. Seems like she's the stingy kind of rich girl. Ugh, keeping every single nickel all to herself. How was I supposed to believe what I'd just heard? My heart was shattered into pieces, and I couldn't hold it in anymore. I stood up and put my face against the window. You're dumped! Brian looked so shocked to see me there but I didn't wait to see if he had anything to say. I just ran home in tears and locked myself in my room. Sarah, open the door. Do you know how many days you haven't eaten for? Sarah, open the door. If not, I will send someone to break the door down. Oh God, are are you okay? What's going on? Nothing. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry for lying to you all this time. I, I didn't mean to. Suddenly, Adam hugged me and said, It's okay. Don't cry. Now can you just tell me what happened? In tears, I told Adam the whole story. From being used by my mother to being betrayed by Brian. Perhaps this is what I deserve for lying to you. Actually, if I were you, I wouldn't want to marry someone like me anyway. You're a great guy. As long as you have confidence in yourself and live with a more positive attitude, good things will happen to you, I promise. Even with this ugly face? I looked up at Adam and, oh my gosh, the burn scar on his face. It was worse than I thought it would be. I reached out to touch it. It must have been so painful. Can we, can, can we start over? Keep helping me, okay? I looked at Adam, smiled and nodded. So after that day, I continued to stay at Adam's house and help him get out of the isolated, self-deprecating life he'd been living. Gradually, his attitude improved and he even started taking a business course to get ready for taking over his family's company in the future. I also encouraged him to start taking off his mask. Love everything about yourself, including that scar. As for my mom, she's currently being detained for her illegal gambling. Yep, that's what she spent all that money on. She'll probably end up in prison, and even though this isn't what I want for her, she kind of deserves it. Oh, and about the wedding, we postponed it. Lucky for me, both Adam and his parents want me to go to college first and pursue my dreams. Once I graduate, we'll probably start planning our wedding, though, and it'll be truly out of love this time. (laughs) Hi, I'm Addison, but all my friends call me Addie. I'm just an ordinary girl who doesn't have any particular talents, but there is one thing I do have. That is, oh, why don't we just watch the video to see what it is? This is my older sister, Olivia. She's beautiful, isn't she? She's also an amazing singer and has a talent for art. She can pretty much draw anything. I mean, I don't know how my parents could have such a perfect daughter like her, then have me, but I'm fine with that. Olivia was all about winning trophies and medals, while I was happy with the ice cream and ton of snacks my parents gave me for getting a B on my math exam. Hey, Addie, my baby, guess who's got some new trendy clothes? Oh, Mom, Dad, I don't like these things. Why are you buying so much? It's such a waste of money. However, Mom's desperate look made me cave so I reluctantly grabbed a random item and went to try it on. Oh, it's a crop top. I stared at myself in the mirror. Okay, so my parents' dumbfounded expressions made their feelings pretty clear. I looked ridiculous. See, I told you already. I'm way too short to wear tops like this. Right at that moment, Olivia walked by. I immediately ran over to her. I think you should have this top. It'll bring out your nice figure. You'll look so cute in it. Mom shook her head. No, 
If Olivia wears this, everyone will see her navel. Um, isn't that the point of crop tops? Then Dad chimed in. Anyway, Liv, where are you off to in such a hurry? It's not that nonsense model club again, is it? Speaking of clubs, is the school dance club still recruiting? You should join. You'll get in for sure. My sister rolled her eyes, then left, slamming the door behind her. I loved my sister, but she just seems to find me annoying. She was like the ice queen, always shutting me out. She never allows me to borrow her clothes or to touch her stuff. And if I ever try to go into her room, she freaks out. It's not that she's mean as such, but she tends to act like I don't even exist. <sighs> it's okay. I mean, I'm kind of used to it. I live my own life and she lives hers. So that's why when I got my first cell phone and started to use social networks, I didn't try to search for her profiles, though I knew she was on all those platforms. That evening, my mom asked me to go upstairs to call Olivia for dinner. No answer. So I began pushing the door open. She suddenly appeared from the bathroom and yelled, Hey, what are you doing? You know you're not allowed in my room. I knocked, but you didn't answer. Mom says it's dinner time. She hissed at me and shooed me away. Ugh, why did she have to treat me like I was some pest? The way she was so weird about her room was annoying. Hmm, maybe she was hiding something in there? Nah, probably I was just overthinking this. Olivia was always like this. Life went on, and my sister, well, she continued to distance herself from me. But then one weekend, I walked downstairs to find her cheerfully humming a song as she danced around the kitchen. When she saw me, she smiled and said, Morning, sis. Come sit here. I made you breakfast. Okay? This was weird. I cautiously sat down and kept looking at her. Um, why are you so happy? And where are mom and dad? Mom and dad just rushed off on some work thing. Then she put the plate in front of me, grinned, then continued. Mom made cookies this morning and told you to take them to grandma's. Tell her I said hi. Oh, you're not coming with me? No, no can do. Sorry, I've got work to do. She continued to look at me and I got the feeling she wanted me to hurry up. Before I'd even finished my toast, she passed me my jacket and bundled me out of the door. Having no choice... I made my way to Granny's while in deep thoughts about how odd this was, until I realized that I didn't even have the cookie bag with me. I'd left it at home. Gosh, I immediately rushed back. But, hmm, why was there a strange car parked outside my house? I lingered back and watched as a middle-aged man got out of the car. Before he even got to the door, Olivia opened it and smiled at him. I dove behind a bush so I could carry on watching. Huh? Why was he handing her flowers and a gift box? She happily took them from him and even leaned into his ear and said something. Oh my god. So this explains my sister's strange behavior. They're a couple, aren't they? I never thought that my sister would be interested in an old man like this. Shocking. But wait, what if... What if he's deceiving her? As Olivia may look sharp, but she's actually very innocent. If that was the case, I would beat him black and blue. But this was just my speculation. I can't hastily act without knowing the truth. So I decided not to let them know that I was there, and quietly entered the house through the back door to get the cookie bag. Later that day when I arrived home, my sister was back to her ice queen self. She was cooking in silence, so I told her grandma said hi, and she just grunted and carried on stirring her soup. Hmm, I needed to find out what was actually going on. The perfect opportunity arose a few weeks later, when mom and dad went away on a weekend trip. I told Olivia I was meeting some friends for a picnic, but this was a lie. I actually hid in my faithful hiding spot and watched. As expected, the old man showed up and Olivia let him inside. 
The door was ajar, so I tiptoed inside and heard them laughing in the living room. I peeked in, and to my astonishment, my sister was sitting on the couch wearing the weirdest outfit ever. It was those kinds of clothes that only catwalk models wear. And most of all, she had this heavy makeup on and looked like a totally different person. The strange man was sitting next to her. Both of them were looking at her phone and laughing happily. Oh gosh, now everything was clear. From her reserved nature to her seem-to-be-secret room, it was all so she could continue to hide this age difference love story. I didn't know how to react now. I just kind of felt bad for her because she had to hide it. I mean, this was her home, and we were her family. We might not have been close, but she was my big sister, and I wanted her to be happy. If this love was real, then I fully supported her. And if this guy turned out to be bad, well, then I'd protect her till the end. My parents returned that evening, so I set up a family movie night. A great idea for family bonding, right? I chose a romantic movie in which the main actress is much younger than her boyfriend. In the middle of the movie, I turned to my parents and asked, Mom, Dad, if you were their parents, would you allow that relationship? They gave me confused looks. Then Dad immediately asked, Hey, Addie, don't tell us that you're in love with an old man, huh? This startled me, but before I could say anything, the doorbell rang. I was about to go open the door, just to avoid answering Dad's question, but Olivia was faster. Not long after that, she turned back and shouted at me. Addie, how dare you touch my phone? What's up, Liv? Who's at the door? Go ask your dear daughter Addison. She gave me a dirty look, then stormed up to her room. My parents immediately bombarded me with loads of questions. What's happening here? Who was the one ringing the bell? Why that manner of Olivia? Okay, the one who rang the bell was Olivia's boyfriend. So, earlier, when Olivia left her phone in the kitchen, I noticed that there was a message from a man named Henry Davis. I immediately searched for him on Facebook and found out that this was the same guy who'd been visiting her. So, I used her phone to text him, telling him to come around at 8pm. I thought it would be better if Olivia could make her relationship public with our parents. But, Hayes... It seems she didn't take it very well. Anyway, now I had no choice but to tell my parents everything. Their faces dropped, and without saying anything, they ran upstairs and banged on Olivia's door. But there was no reply. Instead, all of us heard a rattling sound from the back door, and Olivia had fled. Our parents' faces turned red, while I felt so guilty as I not only wasn't able to help her, but only worsened the situation. The next day, Olivia still hadn't returned. She also didn't show up for school, which caused my parents to freak out. Then I suddenly thought of Henry. Right, why didn't I think of asking him from the beginning? So I immediately contacted Henry and asked him to help find Olivia. That afternoon, when I just got home from school, I saw Henry driving off. There was a note stuck to the door saying Olivia was fine with an address below. And it also said if we come there at 9 a.m., we'll see Olivia. The next morning, we showed up earlier than scheduled. Huh? It was a studio. And just like Henry said, Olivia was there. She looked so glamorous and was so busy prepping for a photo shoot that she didn't seem to notice us. Henry welcomed us and started explaining everything that made my parents, as well as me, speechless. Turns out... The truth was far from what I thought. He was not her boyfriend. Instead, he's her manager. He saw Olivia's potential and guided her to become a photo model and a TikToker. The flowers and gifts were from the brand she was working with. And the other day, she wore that outfit and makeup for a TikTok video. After the shoot was over, we walked over to her. But she took one look at us and ran away. I managed to catch up with her, then said, Sis, why didn't you just tell us the truth? We're your family. We'll always be on your side. On my side? Really? You have no idea what it's like to be an outsider. It doesn't matter how many competitions I win. I'm invisible. 
while you get praised for just getting an okay grade on a math test. I want to be a model, but they don't want that for me. They want me to be miserable. I'd rather leave that house to do what I love. I was dumbfounded, and so were mom and dad, who by this point had caught up with us and heard everything she'd just said. Dad hugged Olivia. Then in an emotional voice said, Olivia, it's not that we forbid you from doing what you want. We were just worried for you. We just know that this industry can be complicated, and we don't want you to get hurt. That's right. And it's not true that we love Addie more than you. You just excel at everything, and we just didn't want Addie to feel insecure. We're really sorry, Olivia. We all love you. Oh, no, Mom. Don't worry. I never felt that way. Actually, I've always admired Olivia. And it made me sad when she ignored me. Olivia burst out crying, and our whole family hugged each other tightly. Sorry to interrupt, but you must have had some idea about Olivia being an internet star already, right? I mean, it's easy to tell from her social networks. I shyly said, I... I don't follow any of her accounts. I thought she just wanted me out of her way. Henry then patted my head and showed us Olivia's social media accounts. And wow, she had millions of views and followers. We all watched some of her TikTok videos together, and she totally rocked it. Seeing how much this meant to her, my parents came round to the idea of her being a model, and they even thanked Henry for helping her. Then Olivia came closer to me. Hey, Addie. I'm sorry for being so cold in the past. Turns out, you love me so much and will support me regardless. At least now, if I really fall in love with an old man, I don't have to worry. Right? Then everyone laughed. Oh, even though my plan didn't, well, go exactly as intended, I still call it a success, because it all ended out great in the end. You thought it was all finished, huh? Nope, not yet. There's one more thing I want to show you guys. That night, for the first time, Olivia let me go inside her room. Wow, it was like a mini studio with expensive flashlights, a ring light, and a camera. And her clothes and makeup collection were super impressive. Oh, do you remember what I said at the beginning of the video about being an ordinary girl? Well, that hasn't changed. But now I can confidently say that there is one thing I do have, and that's an awesome big sister who loves me unconditionally. Hmm. I wonder what's taking Valerie so long. She's been in that changing room for ages. Valerie? Is everything okay in there? Don't force it if it doesn't fit. No, this is the last dress in store. I just need to breathe in for a bit longer. So? It's beautiful, isn't it? Valerie spun around. Then suddenly... Yep. Trying to squeeze into a dress two sizes too small for her, then it split. <sighs> the giggles around us started. Valerie blushed hurriedly paid for the dress and pulled me out of the shop. Why am I so fat? Ugh! I just want to feel pretty on my date. If I was skinny like you, I wouldn't have this problem. Poof! You know, it's not as easy as you think being thin. Yep, you heard me right. Being thin has its downsides. First of all, fashion. My nightmare! I have to wear an extra small size, and the clothes still hang off me. Actually, most of my clothes are from kids' stores, so I feel so untrendy. Then in winter, I have to wear tons of layers just so I don't freeze to death. And in the summer, <sighs> I can't wear cute clothes as I look like a coat hanger. Not only that, because I'm so skinny, people often ask me to do nonsense stuff. Once, I was studying in my room when suddenly I heard my sister Camilla calling me. She'd forgotten her keys and forced me to climb through her tiny window gap to get them. Seriously, I can't even! Then, on another occasion, Valerie made me crawl into the classroom locker to help her cheat on her Spanish test. Unfortunately, the teacher walked in while this was happening 
and gave me a week's worth of detentions, of course. Ugh. Oh my god, No Way Home is so good. I literally can't think of one bad thing to say about it. Yep, the part near the end? Ah! Yep, guess what? I'd managed to trap my foot in a manhole. Man, what rotten luck. I tried pulling my leg free, but it was no use. It wouldn't budge. There I was, freaking out that I'd be stuck here forever, and all my friends could do was huddle together and ask me questions like, Madeline, how on earth did you get your foot in such a small slot? Wow, that's unbelievable. Even Jaden, my bookworm friend, took out a ruler from his backpack and started measuring how wide the slot was. Grr. My dear friends, I'm being stuck down here. Stop gawping and help me! Finally, they tried helping me out, but in the end, we had to call the rescue squad. By this point, a massive crowd had gathered around me and strangers were filming me. When I was finally free, everyone looked at me and held back their laughter. Even Parker, my crush, was smiling. Jeez, this was beyond embarrassing. But a hot guy like Parker would never notice a moving skeleton like me anyway. <sighs> Don't think like that, Maddie. You're so pretty. Show me some confidence, would you? Valerie said as she nudged my arm. I put the book down and glared at her, and suddenly noticed Parker walking towards our table, smiling. And, yep, he said he wanted to sit with us. Even though I was cheering inside of my head, I still had to act composed. And, oh my god, can you believe he even said I was cute? After that day, Valerie kept on encouraging me, saying he had definitely given me a green light. So, finally, I gathered my courage to write down all my feelings for Parker on a note and clipped it to his notebook. At the end of class that day, he came to my desk and took my hand. Yay! Everything was fine, great even, until one day when the two of us were taking a romantic walk past the Swan Lake, Parker suddenly turned to me and said, You're so beautiful, Maddie. And if you just put on a few more pounds, I swear you'll be the hottest girl at school. Yes, I know, but it's hard for me to gain weight. No big deal. Just leave it to me. I'll fatten you up. I thought Parker was just joking, but it turns out he was being deadly serious. Since that day, every time we went on a date, instead of taking me to the bowling alley and movies as usual, Parker would take me out to eat. I swear, I've tried all the restaurants in our town. More surprisingly, on my birthday, Parker even gave me a bouquet of fried chicken. How romantic! But this didn't change anything, as my weight still stayed the same. Parker was disappointed when he peered over me and saw the scales hadn't budged. Then he sighed out. How come you and Valerie are friends, but look totally opposite? Here comes our adorable, chubby Valerie. What? Parker called Valerie adorable again. This wasn't the first time either. Annoyed, I put down my fork and walked away from them. After that, I started avoiding Valerie. I did homework with other friends, sat with other girls at lunch, and every time I happened to see Valerie, I turned around and walked away. Honestly, I didn't want it to be this way, but... Just seeing her made me uncomfortable. But I couldn't bear to see my boyfriend call my BFF cute while well, he thought I was too skinny. <sighs> then summer break finally rolled around. I thought it'd be just me and Parker, but then he went off to a summer camp in Spain. <sighs> the plan was all ruined. So I spent a whole sunny day inside sulking. What's wrong? Are you bored because your lover is away? So why don't you take this time to surprise him when he returns? Surprise? A great idea popped into my head. But, but how do I get chubby? Easy peasy. Okay, if it's that easy, then show me. Okay. 
if you'd do my summer homework for me. What? She's such an opportunist. But I really wanted to pile on the pounds and please Parker. So, without hesitation, I nodded in agreement. So, from that day on, I started following Camilla's weight gain plan. I switched veggies for greasy foods, and my main meal was always late at night. I also changed water for milkshakes, but I did have to stop drinking them when the smell of milk alone made me feel sick. Seeing me eating crazy like that, my parents worriedly said, Madeline, eating healthily is important, else your health will be affected. But I ignored their advice. This time, I definitely had to gain weight. Finally, after a month of trying, I gained some weight. Yay! I looked a lot more attractive now, didn't I? I was studying myself in the mirror when I heard my phone beep. It was Parker. He was coming over tomorrow with a present for me. The next day, I put on this hot dress that I'd never felt confident enough to wear before, and I asked Camilla to help me do my makeup. As soon as I finished, I eagerly waited for Parker in the living room. The doorbell rang. I excitedly opened the door. But as soon as he saw me, Parker quickly said, Oh, sorry. I have the wrong house. Then he started to leave. Huh? He didn't recognize me? This will be fun. No, honey, you're not mistaken. It's me. Your destiny. Madeline? Is that really you? Oh my, how on earth can you be this big? We've only been apart for a month. So, you don't think I'm prettier now? To my surprise, Parker shook his head. No, no, you're so fat now. It doesn't look okay. Lose some weight. Huh? This was so confusing. I thought he wanted me to be bigger. As annoying as this was, I still listened to Parker and tried to lose the weight I'd put on. <sighs> so, it turns out that losing weight is far trickier than it sounds. Actually, it's a million times harder to lose it than it is to gain it. After a month of healthy eating and exercise, I gained another pound. Ugh! Stop eating that. Are you giving up already? You must try harder. What? It's just some popcorn. Why does he have to be so rude about this? I'll give you two weeks to lose weight. Else we're done. Huh? What did he just say? Done? He was the one who wanted me to gain weight in the first place. Now he was threatening to break up with me if I didn't lose it. How ridiculous. You know what? I don't need two weeks. Let's end it right now. It's clear you never loved me at all. You only like my appearance. If you truly cared about me, you wouldn't care what size I was. Then I walked off. Ugh, how could I have been so stupid? For the entirety of my relationship with that jerk Parker, I was blindly following him. I only cared about pleasing him, and it cost me so many things, including my best friend. I needed to apologize to her right away. I nervously knocked on the door, then waited. Finally, Valerie opened it, but on seeing me, she went to shut it. I'm so sorry. Just let me explain, please. Valerie, I'm so sorry. It was all because I was afraid Parker would leave me for you. But I realize now that he's a massive jerk and I was an idiot forever trying to change for him. Jeez, you're crazy. Parker is totally not my type. I scratched my head and told her about how terrible Parker had treated me and how I'd foolishly listened to him. Man, that douchebag! Then she hugged me. Valerie confessed to me that she'd been trying to lose weight by lowering her calorie intake, but the pounds were coming off, and worse still, she felt weak and tired all the time. I nodded in agreement with her. So, from then on, Valerie and I made a promise to love ourselves, regardless of what size we were, and to never let anyone try and change us. And look, that's Walker and Joel, our awesome boyfriends who love us just the way we are. And you know what? 
it feels so good not caring what other people think. So don't ever let idiots put you down. Because when you allow yourself to just be you, then you can finally realize just how beautiful you truly are. Hi, I'm Belle. I'm 18, and today is my first day at Boston College. Isn't that cool? Oh, wait. I think I hear someone crying. Why don't we go shopping? It'll make you feel better. No, I don't want anything. Just leave me alone. Wait, that sobbing girl? She looked so familiar to me. Is that her? What are you looking at? The other girl snapped at me. Jeez, why so serious? The next day, I decided to do the neighborly thing, so I brought an apple pie over to her. The door opened, and whoa. She looked like she'd tackled a tornado. Her hair and clothes were messy, and her eyes were swollen. Oh, um, hi. I'm Belle. I just moved here. Nice to meet you. Oh, hi. I'm Laura. Yes, Laura. Laura from elementary school. How could she not know it was me? Then my childhood memories started flushing back to me. Back then I was super shy because my family had financial problems. I was always in worn clothes. I guess this made me an easy target for some mean kids. Then one day when I was walking home from school, those kids followed me, pushed me over, then started laughing as they searched through my backpack. But then a luxurious car pulled up alongside us, and Laura peered through the window and said to them, Leave her alone, else I'll revoke your invites to my party. After that, Laura left before I could even thank her, and the mean kids hurried off. Through my young eyes, I saw her as an angel. She was pretty and popular, but she'd still stopped to help me. Unfortunately, right after that incident, my parents thought it was best to transfer me to another school, and I never saw Laura again. Well, until now. Thanks for the apple pie. Come in if you want. Oh, yes, if you don't mind. I walked inside and, oh my, her room was a mess. There were clothes everywhere, trash on the floor, and dirty dishes overflowing in the basin. Something bad must have happened to her to get her this down in the dumps. So I asked her what was up, and she told me her boyfriend had just broken up with her. The worst part was she left her family and friends behind to move here for him. But then he ended things without even giving her an explanation. Poor Laura. The breakup was over two months ago, but it still seemed to be fresh in her mind. I tried comforting her, but the more I did, the more she cried. Ah. <sighs> the next day, I decided to swing by and check if she was okay. The door was ajar, so I peered inside and saw a glum-looking Laura sitting on the floor, hugging and sniffing something. Laura? What are you doing? <laughs> I found this, and... I just miss him so much. Oh. Turns out she was looking through her closet for her sweater and ended up finding her ex's hoodie. That's it. Enough was enough. It was time I finally returned the favor and saved Laura just like she'd saved me back in fifth grade. You'll never move on if his things are staring you in the face. I told her it was time to get her ex's belongings. And you know what? She had a whole big box of his stuff. I took a look. And that's when I saw a photo of them. This is... him? I couldn't hide my surprise. Yeah, that's Cameron, my boyfriend. Or should I say my ex? Why do you ask? Oh, um, nothing. Just thank God you're not together anymore. The word jerk is written all over his face. Then we threw the whole box in the dorm's dumpster downstairs. The poor girl looked like she wanted to jump right in there to retrieve it. I'm going to help you get over this guy. I promise. You're about to discover just how fun being single can be. Oh, you're single too? Um, yeah, of course. Now that her ex's stuff was in the trash where it belonged, it was time to live our best happy single lives. Each morning, I dragged Laura jogging around the park with me and showed her how to prepare delicious healthy meals. Can you believe that she didn't even know how to boil an egg without burning the pot? Yep, I know. It's shocking. Then one time, her basin blocked up, and she was totally freaking out. I came to the rescue with my trusted plunger and showed her how to fix it. Easy peasy. And best of all, no man was needed to save these damsels. <laughs> Next, I needed to show Laura how to enjoy life, because all she seemed to do was slump around her room. 
So, on Saturday night, I dragged her and Kayla to this really cool bar. Man, I'm thirsty. Martinis? My treat. Hold up, Laura. Do you want to know how to get free drinks? And then I told her to walk past some guys, flip her hair, and wink at them with the cutest smile on her face, and bam! Just like that, we had drinks bought for us. Laura seemed very happy with what she just accomplished, and that made me happy too. Only Kayla didn't look so thrilled about it. Maybe her martini tasted too bitter. (laughs) While we were having fun, my phone suddenly rang. Oh my god. I've been longing for that call. But why now? I put it on silent and continued chatting. Why aren't you answering? Oh, it's nothing. Are you sure? Seems important. Yeah, no worries. Before I could finish my sentence, I suddenly heard someone calling Laura. Laura? Oh, Jack! Hi, it's been so long. I'm surprised to see you here. Are you alone or with friends? Before Laura could introduce us, the guy stared at me. Hmm, hey, I think I know you. Nah, I don't think we've ever met. I immediately denied it. But this guy was so insistent, he kind of made me uncomfortable, that I accidentally knocked over my glass. Then I had to make a mad dash to the bathroom to clean myself up. Anyway, that night was great. I was kind of proud of myself for proving to Laura that being single wasn't so bad after all. But then, the very next morning, disaster struck. Kayla ordered me into Laura's room, where she was curled up on her bed, holding a photo of her and Cameron. Ugh, so much for getting rid of all reminders of him. Laura sobbed out that Jack told her that Cameron was seeing someone else, and now Kayla had come up with an idea to get revenge on him. I know this hurts, but please, just ignore him and move on with your life. (sighs) what do you know? Are you on Laura's side or her jerky exes? I just ignored Kayla and tried to talk to some sense into Laura. Thank God she seemed to listen to me and cancel the revenge plan. Oh boy, Kayla looked furious. I went back to my dorm and let out a relieved sigh. Then suddenly my phone got an incoming message. Can't wait to see you tomorrow. Okay, the truth is, I'm seeing this guy who I like loads but I didn't want to rub Laura's face in it, so I haven't mentioned it to her. The next morning, I put on a cute dress, did my makeup, styled my hair, and excitingly stepped out of my dorm room to find stacks of trash bags in front of my door. Who on earth did this? I dragged them downstairs to put them in the dumpster. When I found all my mail in there covered in trash juice. Ew. Was this a prank or what? Whatever. I didn't have time for this. I was already late. I arrived at a gallery and saw that he was already here looking at a painting. Hey, sorry for being late. He turned around with a smile. Well, you're worth the wait, you know. Okay, please let me explain. So, yep, that's Cameron, but it's not what you think. I met him the other month as he was helping out at an event for new students. He didn't care that I wore thrift store clothes and that my sneakers weren't cool. Instead, he saw past these things and started talking to me first. So Jack was there too, which is why he sort of recognized me. I've been texting Cameron loads, and I must confess, I think I do have feelings for him. But don't get me wrong, I didn't know Laura was his ex until I saw the photo of them. Oh boy, that sure shocked me to the core. I didn't want to tell her and not only break her heart all over again, but also destroy our friendship. That's also why I didn't care to answer Cameron's call in front of Laura when we were at the bar. And I was super lucky that Jack didn't recognize me that night, or it would have been a total disaster. I know I needed to tell Laura the truth, but first she just needs a little more time to get over Cameron. I went home from the date with a big smile on my face, but what I saw made it instantly fade. My entire makeup collection was smashed up. What? Who would do something so mean? It took me ages to save up to buy all that. As I checked to see if any of it was salvageable, I saw a long blue hair nestled amongst the carnage. Furious, I was about to go confront her, but Kayla and Lara had already appeared in my doorway. Why did they look so angry? How could you befriend me like that when all along you were seeing my ex? 
So your you don't need a man speech was all just one big lie so you could take my guy, huh? <laughs> and do you really think Cameron would like a girl like you? You can't even afford a decent handbag. Right. Let me tell you this. You will never be like one of us. And you'll never be good enough for Cameron. How could Laura think of me like that? I truly wanted to help her. Like she'd helped me. I totally only have good intentions, Laura. I had no idea he was your ex when we first met. The only reason I didn't tell you sooner was because I knew you needed more time to heal. And I didn't want to hurt you because I adore you and value our friendship. Do you remember fifth grade? I was being teased by these kids and you were the only one who stood up for me. I just wanted to return the favor and help you too. But hearing you say that stuff makes me so sad. After that, I shooed them out of my room and locked the door. I refused to go to lectures and ignored all Cameron's calls and messages. Maybe Laura and Kayla were right. Cameron and I weren't meant to be. We were from two different worlds. Eventually, a few days later, I had to go outside. Well, because I ran out of food. When I passed by a coffee shop, I saw them. Cameron and Laura sitting together. <sighs> so Kayla was right. A rich guy like Cameron would never like an ordinary girl like me. I couldn't live in the same dorm as Laura anymore, so I was packing my stuff to move out of there. Suddenly, I heard Laura's voice. Are you running away from your problems like I did? I ignored her and continued packing. You know, I met Cameron, and we had a long talk. He finally told me why he broke up with me. It was because I was too dependent on him, and I couldn't do anything on my own. But you... You helped me stand on my own feet. And for that, I can never thank you enough. Laura, I honestly always wanted to tell you the truth. I know, but it doesn't matter anymore. You know, the important thing now is to enjoy my independent single life, right? Oh, I got you these. Kayla was way out of line destroying your things. Also, I think there's someone who wants to see you. Suddenly there was a knock on the door. I opened it and, oh my god, standing there with a huge bouquet of flowers was Cameron. So it looks like I can continue getting to know Cameron now, and I don't have to move out anymore. But do you know what the best part of all is? I have my friend back. <laughs>